they were all fake. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to call the Door County Board of Supervisors to order on Tuesday, December 19th at approximately 10 a.m. Would you please join me in a Pledge of Allegiance to the flag? <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Roll call, please. We have 20 present, one absent, excused. Presentation of the agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Correspondence. Including your packet, you see the unassigned fund balance, Don Free email, Dan Powers email, uh, two letters from Representative Mike Gallagher, one concerning the SALT for the current tax proposal, and the correspondence for the J1 visa program. Does anybody have any correspondence they want to add? Well, Ken. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as I was going to church Sunday, one of the, uh, a couple, a friend of mine, uh, just, you know, we said our hellos and that, and they brought up the senior, excuse me, the community center, and they were just thrilled how that was coming along, and it's, we made the right decision, and they were real happy with it, and that, boy, before that place was so small and dumpy, we couldn't even get in there. It was always so crowded, and we're looking forward to using the new one now. And uh, I made the comment, well, it was a little pricey, but nobody got hurt. It's a, it's going to be, and I took a lot of credit for, you know, building. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, it was nice to hear somebody just, you know, on the street mention that, that they are happy that we are doing this. It kind of, I know it's only two people, but it kind of, it, it justifies it to me that, yeah, I'm not hearing anything negative and people are coming up and saying it's good that we did it. So I just wanted to share that with everybody. Okay, great, thank you. Thanks for the proposal. <laughs> public comment. Does anybody need public care to make comment? Would you please rise, come to the microphone, and state your name? That would happen. Good morning. My name is Dan Wolfel. I live on Park Road uh, out near Valmy. They have the special needs. And I'm here representing mm -hmm. a group of mostly senior citizens uh, known as the Door County Pickleball Club. I understand this morning that you'll be getting a presentation on future uses of John Miles Park. Over the past few months, our club members have been working with the property committee and others in the county to encourage the construction of outside pickleball courts at either the senior center or the fair park. The initial design concepts for the senior center, community center, included room for pickleball courts. If you're not familiar with pickleball, it's one of the fastest growing sports in the country, and in many cases it encourages tourism by drawing visitors to specific vacation areas. As an example, probably many of you are familiar with the villages in Florida. There are currently over 190 pickleball courts in that facility, and that's for the most part a senior residence only area. I've also supplied Jill Lau a brief video from the NBC Nightly News that talks to the uh, explosive growth of the sport, so I'm sure she would make that available to you. Our group would appreciate your support in designating an area either adjacent to the community center or in the park that could be the future home to outdoor pickleball courts. Our club is willing to fund the design and obtain construction bid documents as a gesture of our good faith and interest and would appreciate the opportunity to work in concert with the county to achieve that goal. So, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Any response? I have a quick question, actually. Yes. Regards to that, if, if is sure, that okay for clarification, um, are you associated with the folks out at Southern Door that are um, they have a pickleball group going on as well? That's part of our group. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thanks. <coughs> Approval of the minutes of the October twenty fourth regular meeting and November fourteenth, twenty seventeen budget slash annual meeting. Motion to approve. Motion Second. 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 Changes, additions, deletions, comments, grammatical remarks, other errors or omissions? <laughs> if not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 
Any business and updates? Resolution 2017 74 approval of Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources nine key elements plan grant. Mr. <coughs> Fisher. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm getting there. I'd like to, I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2017 74. Second. And that is, uh, I, I will let Erin uh, Hansen is here. I'll let her explain it. She can do a better job than I can on it. Good morning. Yeah. So, can everybody hear me? This resolution is to accept $20,000 for planning in the Anakee watershed. And this would be a next step associated with our mill pond project. The purpose would be to do um, an in-depth look at the watershed at sources of um, runoff coming into the mill pond area. There is no additional funding, um, county funding uh, requested. This is the grant will cover our staff time to do this work. Okay. Question? That will go to the voter board, please. Past twenty, yes. <laughs> Next, before we move to the adoption of the John Miles County Park, we're going to have Becky Kerwin from Planning come and give us a overview presentation of what we're going to be talking about. Good morning, Becky. Good morning. I'm Becky Kerwin. I'm a planner for the Door County Land Use Services Department. Thank you for listening to my presentation today. This is a project I've been working on for the past year. It's been a fun project as well as informative. So today I'm presenting the John Miles County Park Recreation Plan, Phase 1, 2017. Earlier this year, Ken Pavic met with my department, Land Use Services, as well as Parks and the Building and Grounds Department to discuss how to develop this plan and whether or not Land use services should be the one to do this plan. So ultimately, we were chosen as the authors of this plan. And we met several times. And between these meetings, we agreed on a phase one as well as a phase two. So today, you're hearing about phase one. And phase two, we expect to start next year. And that would be where we work more closely with the county departments and committees that serve and use the park. John Miles Park, there's an illustration here, an air photo of the park. It's a 64-acre park, and it's mostly used for racing, the county fair, equestrian activities, as well as storage, winter storage primarily. Uh, the park has long been considered to be underutilized, and there have been three plans and recommendations developed over the years to address the underutilization of the park. The first one was in 1988, and that was the fairground study done by Bay Lake Regional Planning. And then there was a second management study done in 1989, and that was by UW Extension. And then in 2013, the Ad Hoc Fair Committee came up with some recommendations that were specific to the fair. So the first two studies were more generally regarding the park, and the Ad Hoc Committee came up with fair-specific recommendations. So the first step in our planning process was to develop a or write a site assessment. And this took a look at the current and past uses of the building and grounds, as well as a review of general recreation plans and then the park-specific plans for the John Miles Park. And then the site assessment also includes discussion on demographics of residents and visitors to the county, as well as the Door County Economic Development Corporation and Visitor Bureau's efforts to attract younger families and younger visitors to the county. Overall, we are an aging population, but fortunately, we have 
a lot of assets that will attract younger people to the county. Um, after the site assessment, we started the public input process where we held six open house meetings and tours at the park on three separate days at six separate times to allow as many people as possible to attend. We followed up those open house meetings with emails. We issued three press releases regarding both the open house meetings and an online survey that we set up through SurveyMonkey. And we also um, sent and or called and emailed any or all the organizations that had not participated or given us any input. We also solicited county input. We met with the airport and parks committee five different times. We uh, gave a presentation to the county board when they did their parks tour on May 25th. And then we also sent an email to all county and city users. So we received a lot of good input from both the public and organizations. Um, but I'd like to emphasize today, and it's also emphasized in the plan, that not all of these ideas can or will be done. They're all suggestions. It's basically a visioning process that we went through. So we didn't want to disclude any of the ideas except the ones that were probably not uh, great for this area as far as swimming type stuff and things that were already being done elsewhere in the county. So the input is categorized into five different areas. First one being entrances, access, and passive uses. Second being existing buildings and the outdoor infrastructure. The third being event promotion. Fourth is ball fields. And then the fifth is racetrack area. So in front of you, you have a chart with the five different columns with the titles that I just read off. So as I go through this input, you can bounce back and forth between your chart and the PowerPoint if you'd like. So the suggestions we received regarding entrances, access, and passive uses are to provide distinct addressing, appropriate signage, and attractive entrance ways to both the park and the fairgrounds. It was also suggested to assess the need for fencing around the park or decide if the fencing is possibly more of a barrier to people using the park for passive users. There is strong support for paving the midway as well as striping for parking and possibly creating a tree-lined boulevard out of the midway. Midway is planned for being paved either this year or 2018 or 2019. And other suggestions for passive uses are to build a dog park with obstacles, install a track or trail around the perimeter of the property, and provide more picnicking and grilling areas. So the second category is event promotion. And suggestions given relating to promotion of events at the park are to evaluate the park's capacity for holding more and larger events. The smaller events are costly to set up. The larger events are more cost effective. It's also suggested to develop a fee structure for reserved groups or for reserved use by outside groups. Uh, we should also look at working with the concession stand owners. They're all privately owned and possibly make those stands available to other outside groups. It was also suggested to look at the Door County Fair and possibly make it more Door County specific. Utilize the kitchen at the new community center to cater events, evenings and weekends, possibly at the junior fair building. And also to advertise the park's availability for private events. So the third category on your chart in front of you is existing buildings and outdoor infrastructure. And one popular suggestion was to provide a heated year-round facility with full kitchens and bathrooms for meetings, banquets, and possibly a dance concert hall. The junior fair building, the bathrooms are winterized, but the rest of the building is not. Um, so there was a, there is a possibility of retrofitting the junior fair building for year-round use. Not real familiar with the park. There's the junior fair building right there. Other suggestions are to assess the storage situation for both the soil and water departments and the sheriff's storage compound area and determine if there is possibly a better location. And here we've got the compound storage area is right there and then the soil and water storage area is right there. Uh, one suggestion was also to flip the existing <laughs> horse and cattle barns. so that the horse barn is closer to the horse arena there. 
And then the horse barn's default setup would be with horse stalls. It was also suggested to evaluate the need for camping infrastructure and lighting for evening events. And the fourth category on your chart is the racetrack area. And this in, the input we received regarding the racetrack area hinges on whether or not racing continues. Uh, if racing does continue, the county should consider installing sound walls at the back of the track area. See, that's the track area, and there's a lot of residential homes behind the track. So sound barrier might alleviate some noise issues. It was also suggested to advertise and promote usage of the track for other track sporting events and not just stock car racing, more year-round track events. If racing does not continue, it was suggested that the clay soil that's currently on the track could easily be turfed for other types of ball fields, as well as performances, along with improved seating and viewing areas for other sports or performances. We received a lot of good input regarding the existing soccer fields. The soccer association showed up in high numbers. They expressed the need for better field conditions. There is a field maintenance plan that was just updated this year, and that should help improve field conditions. Other suggestions are to have centralized bathrooms. So the soccer fields, probably know, are right there. Bathrooms currently are right here, and they'd like to see the bathrooms more centralized in the middle of the soccer play area. They'd also like to see concessions, permanent bleachers, lighting for evening play assistant for keeping the bathrooms open, especially during game times, and also allowing schools and the public use, um, use of their soccer equipment during times when games and practices are not in play. So the topic of an indoor-outdoor sports facility was extremely popular in hosting youth tournaments. The field sports suggested are soccer, baseball, football, rugby, lacrosse, and a soccer field with a roof that could be used in the wintertime as uh, an ice arena, as well as a soccer field in the seasonal months was suggested. Court sports mentioned are tennis, basketball, volleyball, and pickleball. Other sports mentioned are skateboarding, BMX, and scooters, as well as having batting cages. Other indoor sports and activities mentioned are having meeting rooms, a fun park, a roller skating rink, rock climbing features. So hosting youth sports tournaments such as baseball, basketball, and soccer will require marketing. However, there are questions as to whether there's a high enough density of teams for the county to draw from to bring them to the county, even in the middle of winter when there's not a whole lot of anything else to do, except it's getting better every winter. Uh, we would likely need an outside operator or marketer in order to host tournaments, although the Visitor Bureau did offer to help sell sports tournaments for youth. So an example of an indoor-outdoor sports facility that was brought up is this Pleasant Prairie Recplex, which is near Kenosha. A lot of the things that they offer here are why offers, but some of the things that are not offered in the county that this Recplex offers are an indoor water park, indoor soccer courts and batting golf cages, pickleball and racquetball courts, an ice arena, and multi-purpose meeting banquet rooms. So it's a great facility to look at if you want to look it up online. There's lots of photos. So additional considerations for the county board to consider are purchasing additional land, seeking fundraising from professional athletes and teams with ties to the county, and during that fundraising process, possibly offer naming rights to any fields or sports facilities. So we've put together this decision-making chart to lay out uh, the possibilities. So in the upper right-hand corner, there's the option to not buy the land and also racing continues. So that means no extra acreage for the county to work with. Uh, minimally, there would be improvements to the soccer fields the existing soccer fields. A sound barrier would be installed at the back of the racetrack area and that the track is used for more year-round events. And then the other three scenarios involve expanded soccer fields for youth tournaments, 
as well as offering other sporting fields, such as baseball, football, and offering some type of indoor facility for sports and other activities. So the county decides to not buy land and not, uh, racing does not continue, and that's the lower right-hand corner of this chart. Uh, there'd be approximately an extra 13 acres to work with. Uh, if the county does buy the land and racing continues, there'd be approximately extra 33 acres to work with. And that's the lower left-hand scenario. And then the upper left-hand scenario is the county buys land and racing does not continue, so that would give the county the maximum acreage to work with, which would be about 46 acres. So all of these possibilities, except for the one in the upper right-hand corner where the county doesn't gain any extra acreage, we would probably need outside analysis, or we will need outside analysis, a preliminary opinion from a sports consultant. And what this consultant would do is interview the key players, key organizers of sporting events in the county, as well as uh, non-local organizers. They would do a site visit with a presentation, an opinion on this decision-making matrix, matrix, excuse me. Um, and this would likely take two to three weeks and cost five to $10,000. So based on the results of this preliminary study, uh, there may be a need for a facility feasibility study. And this would be if there was a specific project concept and location that came out of that preliminary opinion. And so this type of study would involve two site visits, a game plan for one year of operation, discussions with local and non-local sports organizers. And this process typically takes two months and costs between ten and $12,000. The preliminary opinion may also point to the need for a sports, a full-blown sports, sports tourism audit. And this would involve two site visits, interviews with sport tournament operators and marketers to assess the level of interest in the county as a tournament destination. It would involve an assessment of local strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Now, recommendations for enhancements of existing facilities or development of new facilities, anticipated costs, and return on investment. And it would also include a game plan for one year of operation. And so this type of audit would take approximately four months and cost around $24,000. So this is just the chart that you have in front of you, broken up into uh, sections in order for the purpose of the PowerPoint. So what you see here is a timeline for one to two years for the first three uh, categories of entrances, access, and passive uses, as well as event promotion and the existing buildings. So again, these are all options. These are all suggestions or ideas for, future, for the future. And again, we don't think that everything will or can be done. This is just uh, a potential scenario for some of these suggestions that we receive throughout the public participation process. So in the first one to two years, uh, for the first three categories, we're looking at possibly assessing and designing improved entrances, signage, and addressing, as well as conducting event promotion and advertising as appropriate for what's there, the existing buildings and grounds. Also researching insurance costs for outside groups, lighting for evening events, concession stand usage, and catering from the community kitchen. Uh, we'd also would be looking at assessing the junior fair building for year-round use, for winterizing it. Uh, we would be looking at the storage situation and flipping the horse and cattle barns, potentially. And so this slide shows the same first three categories, uh, but the options for three to five years from now. And that may involve constructing an attractive main entranceway to the park, constructing a pathway or track around the perimeter, a dog park, and picnicking areas with girls. And after the midway is paved, we'd like to see um, more larger events promoted. And there may be a need for more camping infrastructure and lighting for evening events. And potentially the junior fair building would be reconstructed for year-round community event space. And then the possibilities for six to 10 years would be to have a community commercial kitchen for public use. Um, as well as potentially constructing a pole building for compounded cars at the Justice Center. So this slide shows the options for the ball fields and the racetrack area for one to two years. And I already went over 
uh, what should minimally be done with the existing soccer fields in the racetrack area, or potentially should be done. And we'd also would like to see the county uh, consider doing the preliminary opinion, as well as consider purchasing the additional adjacent land and assess the willingness of any owners to sell um, at what price and potentially rights of first refusal options. So there's my contact information. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me or feel free to ask any questions right now. Thanks so much, Becky. Um, regarding the YMCA and, and the fact that some of those things that have come up were things that they offer, have they been um, vocal at all in talking about partnership? I mean, it's really, they've kind of grown out of their space almost over mm -hmm. there and it's really not that far away. Right. I did reach out to Tom, the CEO of the YMCA, and he did he did say that he had seen our our press releases and um, our solicitation for input. He said that he hadn't gotten in contact with us because he didn't think that there were any opportunities for partnership. Essentially, um, he did say that the idea mm -hmm. of an outdoor swim pool or a splash pad or water park would be very cost prohibitive. Apparently, they've looked into that in the past. Um, but I do know, well, their website at least has shown plans for an additional soccer field. And uh, there was, well, they just built the playground recently also. So I think their next um, big plan was to construct this soccer field. Dan. Um, I'd like to compliment you on the great job you've done. Thank uh, you. I've been on probably more studies than we want to believe I was on all three or four fair studies or involved. And uh, I think it shows <clears throat> what we can do in-house compared to hiring consultants. Uh, almost all our studies are done by consultants for 10, 15, 20, $25,000. And this is a good a plan. And it is a plan and it's a working plan that mm -hmm. I've seen in, in many years. And uh, they did a great, <coughs> Becky and the staff did a great job. Thank you. And I had a lot of help from Mariah. I really, yeah. I call it your staff, but it's really. <laughs> <laughs> Susan. Uh, this is a, just a kind of picky little question. Um, I'm assuming that somebody knows who John Miles was, probably Mr. Austed, if nobody else. But I don't, and I and I just wondered whether, when we do signage, if it's not already there, and I'm not aware if it is. We have something indicating who he was, that he was mm -hmm. honored in this way, and maybe in our documents just mention who he was. Just a thought. Sir. Sure. Laura. Yes, thank you. Um, to really roll off of what Mr. Austin was saying, again, thank you, Becky. We've, I'm on the Airport and Parks Committee, so um, I've seen this grow, and it was a lot much information, and it was nicely um, displayed in this uh, layout. Uh, question to you. Um, are there any groups that are currently using the park that didn't reply um, with input for this phase one that you can think of? Not that I can think of. I had to reach out to the users. Um, some current users uh, didn't respond. Um, so I did reach out to quite a few, and I'm trying to think of any that I did not get a hold of. Um, John Morey I reached out to as far as the century. And he thought that there may be a need for additional fencing for security purposes for the Door County Century. Um, the equestrian users, I did not hear from. Um, I did reach out to a couple of people from the equestrian users. Um, Dawn Kells, she, she gave input as far as, because she does a lot of her 4-H activities there. And she'd like to see a year-round uh, facility created out of that uh, junior fair building. Did you have any current users in mind? I was just thinking with uh, the stock car racing. Stock car racing, we have heard from them, and they attended a couple of airport and parks meetings. Yeah, I recall that. I just didn't know if they actually um, filled out part of the survey. That was that. I did hear from John Sternard. He actually did the online survey. Good. And he obviously would like to see more racing at the track. Right. I have one more follow-up question. Um, from the studies of 88, 89, and 2013, was there any overlap with information that collected from phase one that we're seeing here today that may, perhaps we have not done yet? For example, 
the so, paving of the midway? <laughs> that, oh, <laughs> or you know, what what information did we that we collected from phase one that perhaps was carried over from the 88, 89, or 13 that we have not worked on? Proceed forward. Well, start with the most current and work back. Uh, the fair recommendations, I believe, some of those have not been implemented. Those are the ad hoc fair committee recommendations in 2013. Go ahead. There is many similarities, and the only obstacle in the way is money. Uh, there's a lot of good ideas here, and there's a lot of good ideas in the one done in 88 and 90, whatever the years mm -hmm. are. But it always evolves, like the mid, uh, paving the midway over the years has been talked about for at least five, six, ten years, but it's always been a money factor and where to get money to do all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And to answer um, the question who John Miles was, he was uh, ran the county fair for I don't know how many years, but they used to call him Mr. Door County Fair. And uh, I don't know the time frame, or, and there's been many people that have done a lot of things like that. Bill Tong was another one in the Ash, Ash family now, but uh, he was Mr. Door County Fair back in the 40s and the 50s, what I can remember. Yes. <clears throat> Just to add to that, I, as I can remember, I think, John Miles' famous comment was bigger and better. Every year he made the comment, the fair is going to be bigger and better. But I, too, want to commend Rebecca and Mariah on an excellent job of putting this together. Uh, there's many, many options here to be made, you know, over the, the coming years. Uh, one concern I have is that the Midway is scheduled to be paved this year. And... There's decisions to be made before that happens. If there's if there's going to be, uh, you know, any kind of a boulevard uh, <coughs> down the middle or a, any uh, piping put in for wiring and that kind of stuff, these decisions all have to be made before they pave. Once they pave, you don't want to be disturbing the pavement and then put this in later. So. Having said all that, you know, it, it, phase one is, a, is just an excellent report of what is, what is possible out there and, and to make decisions for the future. Uh, I would make a motion to, uh, for the full county board to adopt uh, the John Miles Park Recreation Plan phase one and to uh, have the airport and parks uh, make decisions on uh, just what what to do before we go forward this summer and, and be paving the you know the midway, I'll so that, that that's my, I'm making that motion that we approve uh, the adoption of, of uh, the John Miles Park Recreation Plan Phase One. Second that. Yeah. <coughs> Questions? Other discussion? Megan. Uh, just one more <clears throat> comment. Uh, I think this is this this whole plan that's been put together is very. First off, indicative of um, the expertise and the knowledge that our staff has. Thank you. And secondly, also, what can happen when you allow for um, the public to come in and share their opinions? Um, all of these fantastic ideas that have been correlated here, I've, I've heard many of them in, in passing with, with community members. Um, and, you know, have asked them, please, please fill out the survey, you know, let, let everyone know your ideas. And it's really um, refreshing to see all of that reflected in such an organized manner here. So thank you. Thank you. John? Yes. Um, the motion was to have this referred to the Airport and Parks Committee. However, that no longer is going to exist in April, so perhaps the motion should be amended to what department? Dan? I don't think that's necessary. I think what has to be done is just approve the uh, resolution that's before us, and the airport and parks committee and the property committee are going to merge, and uh, they know that the, that's on the radar. They're getting... Um, plans on what it could be. Wayne is doing that. It's on the radar. It's going to be done. The planning will be done, and that's all taken. You really just have to approve the resolution for the day, in my opinion. And that's what... Linda? 
Um, I just wanted to comment if you would like a nice pictorial history of the fairgrounds and John Miles, go into the small log building that is near the cattle and the horse barns, and there are some historic photos in there, and it really makes does a nice recap of the of our park um, and fairgrounds and what it was years ago. I mean, it was very popular, and hopefully we can bring that back again. Yeah. When is that open? When when can you go in there and see that? It's open during the fair hours. During the fair grounds or during the fair. fair. I don't know about First other other days. No, I guess it's my intention is if you pass this resolution today, again, it will go back to the appropriate committee, depending on the timing of our merge and everything. But I think what we'll do is we'll discuss the phase two in terms of how we need to move forward. And then if we do authorize to move forward with something, obviously that all the way come back to the county board. But I think that the main goal today is approve the phase one that, that works that's completed and then allow the committee to discuss the next steps to move forward. And I think that's where <clears throat> you heard some of the comments in re regards to the pickleball courts. If we would look at moving this forward into phase two, we can look at the overall plan for the park and where things could actually be placed and occur. So that's the goal. Any questions? <coughs> Okay, we have a motion and a second. We'll do this by voice vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Becky. Appreciate it. Thank you. Resolution 2017-76, lease agreement, Wisconsin Public Service Corporation. <coughs> Came through property. Biz, do you want to discuss it or do you want grant? To... Well, I can start off with resolution uh, 2017-76 lease agreement with Wisconsin Public Service Corporation uh, Sunny Slope site. Uh, for everybody that studied this uh, lease agreement, well, first of all, I'll make a motion that we approve this resolution. I'll second it. Uh, the lease agreement is very lengthy. Uh, our uh, corporation council worked with the Wisconsin Public Service attorneys to come up with all this language. It's very lengthy. There's a lot to it. And basically what I can say is that for we own the land and the tower at Sunny Slope site. And Wisconsin Public Service wants to co-locate some equipment on our tower and for exchange they're putting up a tower at Heritage Lake site and they would give us space on that tower. So uh, any questions or, or uh, any concern on, on uh, Working with Wisconsin Public Service, you can address him to Grant. He's, he drafted this up, and uh, like I say, it's very long and, and uh, a lot to it. Business explanation uh, is perfect. Uh, if anybody has any questions about the lease agreement, I'll attempt to answer those. The only other comment I'll have is this is a great example of a public-private partnership that benefits both the county and Wisconsin Public Service Corporation without any actual exchange of cash. Yeah. It's really a quid pro quo. They're going on our site, and we will be going on their site. That's good. Any questions? Okay. We'll do this by voice vote. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. <coughs> Next to be 2017-77 uh, Intergovernmental Agreement Fiber Optic Network Utility. Um, we're going to ask Jason to speak to this briefly first. <coughs> Nice that you dressed up for us. <laughs> I wrote myself a little, I guess, speech for, um, and Jill's got some visual aids for me that she'll, that she'll pop up. But uh, just going to go through the the fiber projects. Um, so, uh, as you all know, over the past several year, years, we've expensed county dollars on fiber projects. To some of you, uh, they may be a bit of a mystery, and I thought it would be I'd take the time now to give an overview and an update so you all could have a better understanding of what we've been doing. 
first off, when I say fiber, I don't mean the kind that you get from eating certain foods. I'm talking about the kind that runs along the highway that you normally hear about from companies like AT&T, especially when it gets cut, right? Um, really, it's just the cable that uses glass instead of copper wire. Uh, so why fiber? Fiber allows us to transmit data at the highest possible rates. Fiber also allows you to span great distances, uh, 80 kilometers or more. Um, so it gives us physical connections to various locations, making them more reliable than, say, wireless or other methods. <clears throat> when I speak of the fiber projects, there are currently two of them for the county. Of the two, one of them was divided into two parts, which added to some of the confusion, I'm sure, out there. Uh, the key thing to remember here is that these two projects are independent of one another. <clears throat> the uh, first one I'll mention, uh, which is up there, that's, that's the same one. That's like your geographic map. Um, of what I'll be speaking about now. Um, for the first project, we partnered with Ensight. It was for our public safety. It is for our public safety radio system. They're, they are running fiber to improve their cellular network and allowed us to use some of this fiber for our needs. Uh, this project is, one that was divided, is the one that was divided into two parts, the northern ring and the southern ring. They are separated geographically by the Sturgeon Bay Canal. We call them rings because they really do make a ring uh, for redundancy purposes. Upon its completion, it will link up 11 of our tower sites, the core of our uh, public safety radio system. Uh, as for status, the N-Site public safety project uh, has been completed for the southern ring and is already operational. We've already seen the fruits of this when it prevented our radio network from going down several months ago. I'm not sure if you all remember uh, sometime uh, I believe it was last year where we were, our radio system had been failing. Uh, the Department of Transportation had uh, caused, uh, we share resources with them up at our um, Washington Island site of all places. And the way the network with the radio system is designed is it traversed the entire network all the way, way back down to the southern end. Um, with the fiber optics in place, that would have hap it would have happened again had we not had them in play and operational. Kind of a neat thing. Um, we're also using it to store off-site backups at our Andre's Pit Tower location. We threw a, a, a backup server down there and that's where we're pushing our off-site stuff to, for multiple things for HIPAA compliance and all sorts of great stuff. It's just good to have it off-site. Ensite will be finishing the Northern Ring within the next several weeks and we should have it operational by February of next year, time permitting. Jill, if you want to flip to the next one. That's like the overview, and I, I apologize, it's from November, that's the last map that I had. There's a few segments that are missing. Honestly, I think they have Ellison Bay to finish. <clears throat> the second fiber project is the fiber optic network for the city of Sturgeon Bay. This is a joint project with the city of Sturgeon Bay, Sturgeon Bay Schools, Sturgeon Bay Utilities, and NWTC. This one gives us a link to the various locations throughout the city that we are currently relying on charter for all of our buildings. Um, as for the county, it includes highway and through highway, the Justice Center, <coughs> Government Center Museum, and our new ADRC EMS building. This one doesn't make a ring, it's more of a spider where the various buildings are legs that connect to the body of the spider. Um, the Sturgeon Bay Fiber Project construction actually began yesterday. Uh, yes, the, the breaking of the ground or the, the beginning of the process and will continue <coughs> through, through next year. <clears throat> their purpose. Each one of these fiber networks has a specific purpose. One was to give, is to give us, give our public safety radio system a better, more reliable connection. And the other is to connect all of our buildings with our own fiber so we cannot be held ransom by any provider. While they will serve our purpose well, these networks have and will give us the ability to share resources with other entities in the community. We are already doing this with Southern Door and Sevastopol schools for internet, which allowed them to reach their required speeds for testing. This in turn allows us to share the cost for a much greater pipeline. While the focus currently seems to be on internet, the potential exists to share other resources as well. The sky's the limit here since at fiber speeds, they could be treated as another building of ours. There's really no difference. Um, you know, the same way we uh, link the government center, justice center, or the city of Sturgeon Bay or our museum, ADRC, EMS, um, the only thing that's different is distance. Otherwise, it's the same technology that we use to link those buildings. 
With the Northern Ring soon to be completed, we plan to extend this invitation to other community members to continue the collaboration and cost sharing. So we hope to bring agreements for your approval as early as the first quarter of next year. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Jason. Questions? <coughs> Biz? <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I guess in looking over this uh, page that you have outlining the money part, 12.4% uh, is to be paid by the city. That's a is that does that's that include, a different does that include the school system? That's the phone system. That's that's not the uh, the fiber project. You're ahead. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. If we could get them to pay for 12.4 percent of that too, that'd be great. But. <laughs> <laughs> Linda? Um, I was just looking at page 93 where the costs are allocated among the school, um, NWCC, and all that. Um, it says one time, I believe one time cost. And so they're going to just pay that all at one time, or is that going to be amortized over years? I mean, it's substantial. For instance, $262,000 for the school. Yes, it's paid right away. It's paid right away. So there's the one time expense, and then there's an ongoing operating expense. But for the construction of that network, it's a one time expense for all of us. And obviously, they're aware of that cost. Yeah, they right. multiple okay. meetings, multiple, everybody was on board and same page. Other question? Okay. Nope. Uh, we need somebody to make the motion. Thanks, Jason. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Any other discussion? Okay, we're going to go to the voter board on this one. Twenty yes, one absent. Thank you. Next item is resolution 2017-78, transfer of non-budgeted funds, technology services department phone system. Kathy, your name was on this one. Yeah. Uh, resolution of 2017-78. Uh, I'll make a motion to adopt transfer of non-budgeted funds, technology services department phone system. I'll second that, Mr. Chairman. I think Jason can explain it again. Okay. <laughs> He's I can, just stayed up here. <laughs> I can do the quick overview and if there's any technical questions. But in essence, we went out for a bid for a new phone system. Our existing one was out of date and we could not get uh, new parts. Uh, so we went through the analysis of a new system. Jason did an excellent job. And the system before you uh, is a new system. But we went through, we looked at actually the long-term costs. Um, and the way the resolution is written, we're going to take some existing funds uh, out of the maintenance account to account for some of the capital. And then there is the funds that we're going to need out of the undesignated fund to, I guess, in essence, allow us to purchase the rest of the system for the phone system. Questions? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Now I can make ask yep. a question. Uh, it, it's showing that the city of Sturgeon Bay will pay 12.4% uh, of the, the phone system cost, and I and I assume this is based on the um, the amount of actual correct equipment. That is correct. My question is, when it gets to the maintenance part, over uh, five years, 101,105, then are they going to pay 12.4% of that maintenance cost as well? That is correct. Okay, it doesn't say that on, on this outline here, but I suspect when this all happens and that money, and I think Mark has it down that that would, would come in as uh, revenue. Correct. On, we, on, we, what budget. we do is we show that through the budget process as revenue each year, that amount. Okay, and, and when it says the city of Sturgeon Bay, does that, that includes the school system or the school system is a separate? The school system is not part of our phone system. This is just the phone system and it's 
city of Sturgeon Bay and ourselves and also okay. the Sturgeon Bay Utilities, but utilities, we have an agreement for sharing services, so that's why they're not allocated some of the costs for the phone system. Thank you very much. Anybody else? If not, we'll go to the voter board. Passed 20 yes, one absent. Resolution 2017 79, authorization to expend funds donated to the Senior Resource Center. <coughs> Kathy, once again, your signature was on this one. I'll make a motion to uh, approve it. the authorization to expend funds donated to the Senior Resource Center. Second. Second, my dame. Discussion, explanation. I could provide an explanation on this one. This is just for uh, there's in that area they have received donations and at the time they have not really expended any of those dollars and now that we're going into the new facility there's certain things they would like to acquire for the building um, that were specifically donated for equipment for the building itself. So for example they're looking at some exercise equipment they need some shelves um, or some storage bins for some of the art rooms and so forth. So really what we're bringing for you to today is to say that these funds were donated for specifically those items, but we'd like to actually get your authorization now to be able to spend those funds towards items within the building itself. So that's why the resolution is before you today. Question? Dan. Yeah, the way I read it, it the pickleball people, are they able to convince Joe that the pickleball court that would come under there? No this, no, this is specifically for <coughs> equipment related to inside the building. This is okay. for equipment, not that's not considered equipment. I didn't see that part of it. <clears throat> Steve, I guess I just kind of had a question. I mean, I'm pretty new on this board, um, and this is a lot of money, and um, I just wondered, is this kind of the norm? Is do we just kind of let, let the supervisors of the department just spend that kind of money with any oversight um, from committees or anything. So, you know, I mean, I, it's kind of where Dan's going about the pickleball court, but I guess I'm getting down to, you know, we're just $100,000 and we're just letting them just buy whatever they want to for the building. Again, Joel had made a presentation to his committee of items that they want to allocate initially. So I know part of it's going to be, I think there's, and Joel's in the back, but approximately $20,000 for exercise equipment. I know there was some stuff that they wanted to do for some of the activity rooms, so I think that was initially allocated. This would just be for the initial start of the building, and traditionally now what you do is, I mean, this is for our initial move-in, yep. but let's say in the future they want to still draw down those funds. Normally what we do is we actually budget for that expense, and you'd actually see it as an offsetting revenue. But again, what right now, just because of the timing, it wasn't mm -hmm. part of the budget process, and we weren't quite sure what things were missing. But yep. I don't know, Joe. I know Joe took it in front of his committee, and I mean the intent, yeah, is exactly. He's just not going to go shopping without anyone knowing yep. about it. But I know, Joe. Did you want to add any other input to what I said? No, I think you covered it well. I have questions. This is my answer. Yes. Yeah, I'm just kind of curious. We were told <clears throat> for months on end that that there was no do no donations, and uh, there's a 501c3 out there, and you know this, I'm I'm surprised to see this you know pop up this amount of money as donations that came. So this donation was made prior to the merger and my involvement with the senior center. Oh, so, so this, this is, has been there for a long yeah, time. This has this been, has been, been sitting in a CD every December. It comes due, and we just kept rolling it forward until we got to the new building project. Um, and again, so we have donations that are made throughout every year to the center. Sometimes they're specific that say we want it to go towards this particular area, and some are just general donations, but they're not anywhere near this size. We allocate that out and use that at our discretion for things that we need there. This one was made years ago specific to the building, the new building, or a new building. Um, and again, so at this point, what I presented to my uh, committee, we've got about $25,000 in exercise equipment to put in, we'd like to put into the new room. Um, that equipment we would purchase with this, this funding. Cabinets for... <coughs> 
some of the rooms for storage, that kind of stuff that aren't in the FF and E budget for the building. So, so this isn't money that was donated through a 501c3. This is money no, no. donated to the county specifically to the county, to the senior center, with the intention for the new building. And again, prior to my being involved, that's money that was in a CD when I was put in charge of the senior center. Mark, thank you. Okay, one of my first committee appointments on the Atlanta County Board was something called the. Senior Resources Commission, which has been dissolved. But we set this account up, I want to say in 05 or 06, for specifically for donations to a new senior center building. And there were already some donations there. We had them put into this account. And over the years, people donated to it. And that's where it came from, Biz. Okay. okay thank you. Anybody else? <coughs> thank you, Joe. We'll go to the voter board. Still a surprise. <laughs> that has passed 20. Yes, one absent. Thank you. Moving on to ordinances. I'm going to uh, jump down to 2017-15, the amendment, Chapter 1105, Door County Code, all terrain vehicles and utilities for rain vehicle routes, because after this, we're going to hear a lot from Mr. Fisher, so I thought I'd give Mr. Ninus a chance to speak first. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I move for approval of ordinance 2017-15. I'll second. I'll second. I'll but oh. we have we have to we have to make the, the change on, on line four, the village of Brussels. It's the village of Forcefell before we go any farther. So it's it's, it's with, with that's my motion that we amend it to the village of Forcefell, not the village of Brussels. This is nothing more than an addition to our ATV trails that they want in, 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 in the southern part of the county. It's it's, it's just a formal motion we go through. It's been approved by the village. It's been approved by the highway committee. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Fisher. Any questions? Okay. So we'll go to the voter board for the as amended uh, resolution. So <coughs> ordinance. Past 20 yes. One half. Other ordinances. Report, Mr. Fisher. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I've got about a four hour dissertation plan for this. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> also, have a bridge to sell. Uh, I would uh, make a motion we accept the report. I'd second that. On, uh, to, re to repeal and replace the Door County floodplain zoning ordinance. And I would uh, ask that Mariah come up and explain this. And I'm, I know she knows all about it, but you're going to have to curtail her explanation too, or we will be here for four hours, because this has really been a hot item. And I think we all have gotten feedback on it. So. Good morning, Mariah. Good morning. Um, we actually, there's probably like four different things going on between our department and FEMA right now. This is related to the audit that they decided we needed to have done this past year. So we got a list a month or two ago of probably 20 different things that they wanted us to take a look at, including adopting a new ordinance. So what happens is FEMA creates the floodplain maps and then the Department of Natural Resources at the state level creates the model ordinance that counties need to adopt and that incorporates language from FEMA with regard to their regulations as well as language from the state. And then they basically give you the model and you stick Door County in there and that's what you adopt. So we did that in 2009 when they did new maps for us. Um, when FEMA did new maps, we were required to adopt those maps and adopt the ordinance at the time. We did that in, I think, January of 2009. Nobody bothered to tell us that later in 2009, the Department of Natural Resources wrote a new model ordinance. So we've been regulating things incorrectly in some cases for the last eight years. So as part of the audit, um, they're requiring that we adopt this new updated language. 
what you've probably been hearing about in recent weeks is a completely separate topic, and that has to do with the Great Lakes-wide coastal study that um, FEMA is undertaking. Actually, they started five years ago. And the maps were recently released for Door County, and um, there are going to be some potential big changes for some property owners in the county. And we're having a meeting about that in the middle of January, but that's completely separate from this. We'll have to adopt a new ordinance when, when those changes come into place, but for now we're just adopting something that apparently we should have adopted eight years ago. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Biz. Does this <clears throat> affect just uh, new projects that are being built or, or everything, existing projects as well? Um, the floodplain ordinance is, relates to both. So if you're building something brand new, then there's certain elevational requirements and fill requirements that you need to meet if you're in the floodplain. If you have an existing building that was built either before it was determined to be in the floodplain or before we had a floodplain ordinance, um, then you're limited as to how much you can, you, you get to basically take 50% of the value of whatever the building is and then spend that much money on improving it. But those improvements then need to be up to the current floodplain code. But this doesn't, this ordinance that you're adapting today doesn't change the maps that are in place right now. It's just changing some of the text regulations. And there's, right. not a, there's not any major changes in this from, from what we've been doing for the last eight years. It's just some relatively minor things that they changed in the model ordinance after we adopted it. Does, does FEMA, is this, this is just for DORC, right? it's not for the other 71 counties? This, the update, well, we were, I think we're the only county that got audited in the last year in, in the state, but I'm not sure. Well, probably because we're surrounded by water. That could be. <laughs> But yeah, like I said, there's there's that. This going on, the audit has been going on for the past year. There's the Great Lakes Coastal <coughs> Flood Study, which started five years ago, which is what we're having a meeting about in January. We also, I believe you have been involved in, um, I know the Resource Planning Committee has, in lobbying FEMA to try and get the three inland lakes to be studied because those are on a completely separate system as far as how you determine whether or not they're in um, the floodplain and they actually have higher flood insurance rates on Clark and Kangaroo and Europe Lake than you do on the Bay or Lake Michigan. So that's another thing we've been working with FEMA on. And then FEMA is also working with us on the LIDAR project that's happening next year. So lots of floodplain talk this year. Linda. Um, Mariah, the meeting scheduled for Monday, January 15th at 10 a.m. Um, that's on the floodplain, correct? Right, not on this ordinance. That's on the Great Lakes study where we just so saw the draft different. maps. Okay, yeah. so the maps will be available on the January 15th, but not necessarily related to this floodplain zoning ordinance. Correct. Those maps are separate. When those maps are considered, FEMA is calling those maps draft work maps, and they are saying that the what they call preliminary flood insurance rate maps will be ready in one to two years. And then at that point, there's a formal appeal period related to those maps, but then we're given a deadline by which we need to adopt them. But that's, like I said, that's separate from this. Anybody else? Okay, we'll adopt the plan on a voice vote for acceptance of the plan. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Carried. Thank you. <coughs> ordinance 2017-13, Door County Floodplain Zoning Ordinance. <coughs> Fisher. And then I'll make a motion to uh, adopt Ordinance 2017-13 and re repeal and replace the Door County Floodplain Zoning Ordinance. I'll second that. Any questions? Amend your date. As an ordinance, we'll go to the voter board. So I do have a... Yes, yeah. go ahead. I do... <coughs> Wait, revise this ordinance. Oh, that's from 418-95. Oh, yes. Uh, number two, adopt comprehensive revision, Door County Code. Uh, it says ordinance, uh, then it says December 2018, incorporated in here by reference. Should that be December 2017? Where is he? Where? Page 98. Page 98. Page. It's the ordinance yeah. itself. Ordinance. Yeah. Number two. It's line 14 of the ordinance. Yeah. Probably that should be 2017. I think we thought we weren't going to do it until oh, yeah. January, and so we had January 2018, and then oh. when we got it on this agenda, we forgot okay. to change the year. All right. 
So it should be December 2017? Yes. Correct. Yeah. Okay. No. Wait an entire year otherwise. Yeah. I'd also like to note uh, on this particular copy, it shows that Don City is uh, on the Resource Planning Committee. Yep, we fixed that. Jill's got the correct okay. hard copy. Thank you. Thank you. That happened on the next one as well. Not that I don't want Don included, but <laughs> you do want to be included. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll go to the voter board since this is an ordinance for the as amended ordinance. <clears throat> Mr. Fisher. Okay. Did not take it. That has passed 20 yes, one absent. Report amendments to the Door County Land Division Code. Mr. Fisher. Not getting there. <laughs> Well, I'll make a motion to uh, accept the report on the amendments to the Door County Land Division Ordinance. I'll second that. And Here I am. respectfully ask Mariah for <laughs> an explanation. Um, these are more changes that we're required to make due to state and federal regulations. So a couple of things going on here. Um, we, uh, again, didn't know that as of 2009, we should have had in our land division ordinance um, for certified survey maps and plats and land, what we refer as to as site only condominium plats, that flood plains should have been shown on certified survey maps and plats. So that's what some of these amendments relate to. Um, there also were some changes made at the state level to the, the law regarding the depiction of ordinary high water marks on certified survey maps and plats. So that's um, what these are intended to accomplish. Any questions? If not, by voice vote, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Ordinance 2017-14, amendments to the Door County Land Division Ordinance. Mr. Fisher. I'll make a motion to uh, adopt ordinance number 2017-14, amendments to the Door County Land Division Ordinance. I'll second it. Question. If there are none, we'll go directly to the voter board. I'm pushing the button. There we go. That has passed 20 yes, one absent. Thank you. And 13, new business. None. Number 14, anybody have any oral committee reports? Review committee minutes. View vouchers, claims, and bills. We have a couple of announcements. The first is the next regular county board meeting is scheduled for January 23rd at 10 a.m. Are you sure? Joel? We can do 9 o'clock if you want, since we're going to be down here from the day before. Just as a thought. Is that okay? Back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, nine? that's life. Back and forth, story of <laughs> my life. So 9 o'clock? Go for 9. Nine's good. It's staying at the 23rd? Yeah, we yes. Nine is okay. And then when we, um, Mark, would you like to come forward and make your announcement? This is important, it concerns your pay. Thank you. What I'm asking for this morning is your assistance in getting your requests for reimbursement for your committee meeting per diems, your county board per diem, your mileage for the end of 2017 if you would get that to Chairman Lino in time for his approval so that he in turn can get it back to us no later than December 29th. Usually it's not quite as much of a big deal and you've got January to get that in. Again, everybody pays taxes and their W-2s are based on when you get paid. But if you remember from the budget process, we're changing beginning in 2018 where the expenses get charged. Rather than getting charged back to 
what I'd refer to as the county board department, they will be charged beginning with the January committee meetings back to the responsible departments for the oversight committee. So the finance committee, for, for example, their per diems and their mileage will get charged back to the budget for the finance department. In order for us to do that, we have to make some changes to our Ceridian payroll software so that things get pushed back to the accounts where they need to get pushed. So that's why where we could normally deal with some things coming from December, some things coming from January, it's going to be very difficult for us to deal with that mixed bag this year. So, uh, David, I don't know when you need it to you for your approval so that we in turn can get it by the 29th of December. You can set that deadline. But again, if you would please be diligent this year in getting any <clears throat> December or if you even still have November or God forbid October expenses uh, for meetings that you haven't submitted for reimbursement, please get those in so that we can get them processed on the very first payroll in 2018. Thank you. So with the holidays coming up, um, I would say if you send it electronically, of course, anytime, it's fine to do it before the 27th. Um, that would be great. I can come here and sign on the 27th any paperwork copies, um, but the sooner you get it in, the better. I'm just waiting for the code number for today. Yeah. We're getting there. Is there any other meeting? <laughs> no. We're done. For the last one, I just checked. Yeah, if you can get them in today and fill them out, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Dan? Uh, on the subject of uh, meetings, you said 9 o'clock for the county board meeting? Yes. Okay. Um, also, on the 18th is uh, 4 to 6, is that correct? Is a senior citizen tour or what, what do you open want? House. Open house. Grand opening. Grand. We're doing the open. So, just for, yeah, for your calendar. So, right now, <clears throat> knock on wood, everything's still on target, but we're looking at January 18th. That's a Thursday. From 4 until 6, we're going to hold the open house. Um, and the reason why we're doing open house is that would be an opportunity for everyone to tour the buildings before we actually occupy and have paperwork out that's HIPAA related. You know, we have to deal with that side of it. So this would be the ability to have the public come in and tour the entire building versus having it restricted. And then people have asked, are we going to do a, like a, you know, building dedication slash grand opening? Yes, we are, but that will probably be closer in late March the first week of April at the latest, but that'll come later. So for right now, we're just planning as a, an open house for, again, January 18th from 4 to 6 p.m., so please mark your calendars for that. The last announcement I have is I want to wish each and every one of you, your families, our staff, happy and safe holidays. Um, I look forward to seeing you next year. The per diem code is 1219. John? Mr. Chairman, I would like to also to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Well. Merry, Christ Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to all. Was that pre Christmas trees? One, two, one, nine. That's going to be three digits. Yeah. 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 Once again, the code is 1219. Yeah. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I was also going to wish everybody a very Merry Christmas and a profitable New Year. Uh, I can explain that to anybody that wants to hear about it, but not here. Uh, but anyway, uh, with that being said, I'd like to make a motion. If there's no further business to be transacted, I'd like to make a motion we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you.